Good morning. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And follow me along, please, in your authorized version of the scriptures. We're going to begin with a passage in Luke chapter 9. Now, you are going to see that thumbnail. And that is a Hollywood rendition of a modern ghost. It's actually the ghost from the ring. It gets confused with what is called the grudge ghost. And if any of you have seen that movie, The Grudge, with the, the woman crawling around with the hair in her face and making that uh, noise like that and that other one. Yeah. So apparently people are seeing that nowadays. Mm. Mm. But Luke chapter 9, verses 51 on to verse 56. Luke chapter 9, verse 51 on to verse 56. Please get an actual physical copy of the authorized version of the scriptures. Follow me along, word for word, verse by verse. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Make sure I'm not taking anything out of context. Make sure I'm not misspeaking or skipping a groove. Please. Please. Luke chapter 9, verses 51 on to verse 56. And it came to pass when the time was come that he, our Lord Jesus Christ, should be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. His, he was fixed. He was going to Jerusalem. He could not be deterred. He had focus, as you could say. Okay? Okay. And sent messengers before his face, and they went, and entered into a village of the Samaritans, to make ready for him. And they did not receive him, because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. See, the Lord had his destination fixed, what he was going to do. He came down here with a purpose, to die. <laughs> okay? And because his purpose was fixed, the Samaritans, well, look at that verse, and they did not receive him. Why? Because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem, not get diverted by something. Interesting. Very interesting. Diversions. Oh, boy, they're prevalent nowadays, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, the, th the sons of thunder, okay, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as Elias, Elijah, did? Hey, Lord, let's, let's destroy those people. But he turned and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. For the Son of Man has not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. So the Samaritans went and received the Lord Jesus Christ because he was, he was going to Jerusalem. So he's like, okay, go to another but see, James and John, the sons of thunder, Benazirs, destroy them. <laughs> it's like, no. <laughs> no. Get them. Let's go on to another one. But the thing is, ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. See, James and John wanted to destroy. And the thief cometh not, but to what? To kill and to destroy. And at this very time, even though they were in the midst of God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, God our Father, the Holy Ghost was not yet given unto men. 
that seal, that permanent seal unto the day of redemption. God in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory, was not there yet. So what kind of spirit were the James and John of? They wanted to destroy. They wanted to destroy. Hmm. Familiar spirit. You don't know, you know not what manner, what manner of spirit ye are of. The spirit of Christ, the Holy Ghost that is in you, if you are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, will guide you unto all truth. The spirit that is of this world, that spirit of Antichrist, a familiar spirit, is there just to destroy and divert from the truth, having your face steadfastly set. A familiar spirit. We're going to be looking into this a little bit today. Now, the word familiar within the authorized version of scriptures appears 18 times with the variation of the words, word familiars, okay? Um, you might look in a, a Strong's Concordance or something or online, and it's like, uh, it says only 17. It appears twice in one verse, okay? But interesting to note, the word familiar and familiars only appears once in the book of Jeremiah. We're going to look at it. Only appears in the Old Testament. A familiar spirit. So that must mean that these familiar spirits that we were warned of in the Old Testament, in the law, and also elsewhere, we're not going to look at every appearance of the word familiar, familiar spirit, okay? But so that must mean it must only be relegated to the Old Testament. No, no. See, when things are crossing dispensational lines, if something that was pertinent in one dispensation is not pertinent in this dispensation, the Lord will signify that in his word. Okay? For example, the dietary restriction that was under the law onto the Jew. Okay? That has been lifted today. You read that in 1 Timothy chapter 4, which we will be looking at today. Okay? It was lifted today. Okay, we don't have to keep the dietary laws to be right with God, to be saved or stay saved, as like it was in the law, under the law, in the dispensation of the law. Okay, our Lord clearly, clearly undid, undid it within this dispensation. Okay, also that us Gentiles have been grafted into the tree of the Jew. Okay, whereas under the law, yes, a Gentile could come Onto the Lord, yes, but they had to go through the law. They had to do all that stuff. Today, we don't need to go to a priest. We don't need to keep the law to be saved, to stay saved, or be right with God. No, we go to the Lord broken, contrite, and in fear of him, call upon his name, and may he save you. Okay? So those are things that were pertinent in other dispensations that are not pertinent in this dispensation, which have been clearly made evident within this dispensation within the Pauline epistles and elsewhere, okay? And again, the thing with the eternal security, okay? Um, it's not your salvation to lose, dear friend, okay? In Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 on to verse 14, or 14 and thir uh, 15, uh, it's 13 and 14, excuse me. Um, you are sealed if you are saved unto the day of redemption. Once saved, always saved, okay? Even... Easy believers and heretics are proponents for um, eternal security. They, 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 they heretics and liars, but even they are proponents for eternal security. You come to the Lord on his terms and he saves you. You cannot lose what is not yours. It's a gift. Okay. And this idea that you can lose your salvation, lose your salvation. That you can lose salvation today comes from these charismatics, from Catholics, who teach what? Work salvation without any assurance of salvation. Because it's what? It's the sin of presumption to presume that you can know that you're saved. 
And they're right Catholic. Huh? So, but there again, unlike under the law and other dispensations, God within you, that seal, unlike any other dispensation, uh, in the time of Jacob's trouble, 144,000 Jews will be eternally secure. 144,000 Jews, not Jehovah's, Jehovah's Witnesses, okay? Uh, the Jews, for 144,000 Jews will be sealed, eternally secure. Other than that, no. No. See, this dispensation is unlike any that will be in history. Because God is in you. The hope of glory. Once saved, always saved. Different from another dispensation. Hence... The change has been marked. But if something has not been um, marked as different, then usually it's still binding. Usually. There are exceptions, yes. But usually it's still binding. Hence this thing with the familiar spirits or familiar spirit. See, today in this dispensation, God dwells within the saved, born-again believer. Okay? Okay? And are sealed unto the day of redemption. The devils, Satan, who is a counterfeit, who is antichrist. Antichrist is not only against, but a replacement. So, is it any wonder that devils infest people, much like they did in uh, the Old Testament? Yes, but even more so today in a pronounced fashion to counterfeit, to copycat real thing hmm. and see why are some of these charismatics claiming to see ghosts that look like the thumbnail what's with that so a Hollywood movie can accurately depict a ghost that is appearing to people who are apparently saved and yeah and we have talked about, the video will be in the description box this time, I promise. Um, ghosts, poltergeists, that happens. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Yes, there is such a thing as ghosts. There is such a thing as poltergeist activity. Yes, there is. But you got to remember, you got to remember something. Those who are truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. Well, I, I know of a brother. Uh, out uh, northeast of us, um, every once in a while, the house that he lives in has poltergeist activity in it. But he's not plagued by it frequently. Okay, it, it, it happens. And, and he's a saved man. He, he does like, well, we're going to look at at the last part of this video in Philippians chapter 2. He, you know, he calls upon the name of the Lord. All right? If you're saved, supposedly, and you're being tormented by... Ghosts, tormented, often picked on. You, you need to figure out why. Is there something in your house that you're giving a, a doorway onto to these devils? Or is the spirit that is in you that spirit of Antichrist and the world knows its own? Hmm. I wonder. I wonder. Turn in your authorized version of the scripture. <laughs> Go with me in the scriptures. Please. Come on. Follow me along. Follow me along. Okay? Please. Please. Leviticus chapter 19. Now, we are not going to look at every occurrence of the word familiar. Like I said, it appears a total of 18 times with the variation of the word plural, familiars. Okay? Which we're going to look at that. But we, all we need to do is establish what a familiar spirit is. Okay? Leviticus chapter 19, just one verse. Verse 31. Leviticus 19, verse 31. Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Now, interesting too about this familiar spirits. 
You will see all but what out of 18 times, I think only five of them are not associated with wizards. Generally, usually when you look into familiar spirits, always associated with a wizard. You not always, usually associated with a wizard. Very interesting. Very interesting. What is a familiar spirit? What does it mean to be familiar? You know, to have converse, you know, for example, it was it was uh it was said to me yesterday, and, very, and this is very good, okay? You can be acquainted with someone, okay? You can be acquainted with someone. Like um, like our, our best friend is acquainted with my sister. He met her just once and, you know, just acquainted with her. Then there are those that you can be familiar with that you have converse with, that you speak to and stuff like that. You know, uh, you spend time with them, that kind of stuff like that. Okay, you see, so what, what is a familiar spirit? Let's look scripturally at what it means to be familiar. Go to Job chapter 19. I, I, I admit I try to my best to stay away when it comes to words in scripture. I do tend to my best to stay away from uh, Webster's 1828 Dictionary. I, I recommend Webster's 1828 Dictionary. I, I use Webster's 1828 Dictionary. I do. But personally, I prefer to see well how the Lord defines a word than fallible Mr. Webster, who has botched it on several occasions. Okay? So, Job chapter 19, verses 13 on to verse 19. A little context here. Familiar, okay? Uh, by the way, Leviticus 19.31 is the very first appearance of familiar. And what is it associated to? A familiar spirit and wizards and defilement. So we, we can know right away that whatever a familiar spirit is, it ain't good. It ain't good. So, Job 19 verses 13 on to verse 19. He hath put my brethren far from me, and mine acquaintance are verily estranged from me. Acquaintance. Acquaintance. Okay? Like, like I said, our best friend met my sister. So he's acquainted with my sister. Not familiar with. See? Okay? And right, on, right away in verse 13 here, we see brethren and acquaintance and estranged gone away. My kinsfolk have failed me, and my familiar friends have forgotten me. <laughs> All but his three that accused him and just dragged him through the mud, right? Right, yeah. They that dwell in mine house and my maids count me for a stranger. I am an alien in their sight. I called my servant, and he gave me no answer. I entreated him with my mouth. My breath is strange to my wife, though I entreated for the children's sake of mine own body. Yea, young children despised me. I arose, and they spake against me. All my inward friends abhorred me, and they whom I loved are turned against me. So in, when it comes to familiar, Look at this context and where familiar appears, okay? Look at that in verse 14. Look, look at the associations here. My kinsfolk have failed me and my familiar friends, familiar friends, familiar spirit. So something that either you are conversant with or something that is very kind of close, isn't it? Because look at, look at this context, okay? We see brethren, acquaintance, kinsfolk, Friends, maids, okay, servants, okay, his wife, his children. Those are things that are very, very close knit onto a person. A person is a spirit, soul, and body, by the way, okay? So we see that with familiar in context there, while focusing just on that, familiar friends, familiar. There's a closeness, closeness that is not of an acquaintance, but yet Similar unto a brethren, brethren, you're familiar with your brethren. So we see a closeness, a personal, a, a personal aspect with something that is familiar. Okay? 
Now let's go to the second, uh, uh, not, not the second, but another appearance of the word familiar. It's in Psalm 41. And again, again, you're going, look at what's around the meat of the sandwich. Okay? Okay? Look what, look at the bread and the lettuce and the tomato. You see the meat and then the bread and the cheese or whatever is on the bottom of the sandwich. You look at the entirety of the sandwich before you go in and eat at the meat. You understand? Psalm 41, verses 5 on to verse 6. Check this out again, okay? Mine enemies speak evil of me. When shall he die and his name perish? Oh boy, like so many are saying of me right now. <laughs> yeah. And if he come to see me, he speaketh vanity. Vanity. Empty. Fruitless. Useless. Okay. His heart gathereth iniquity to itself. When he goeth abroad, he telleth it. I have seen. I have seen. I have dreamed. I have dreamed. I'm seeing that ghost from the movie all the time. Or not all the time, but here and then again. Okay. Hmm. Okay. All that hate me whisper together against me. Against me do they devise my hurt. An evil disease. Say they, cleaveth fast unto him, and now that he lieth, he shall rise up no more. Yea, mine own familiar friend, familiar friend, in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. So familiar friend, someone that you trusted, Someone who is close to you, personal, familiar, okay, familiar. And look at that context. Look at that context in which familiar appears. Whereas within the book of Job, the context was uh, showing us what? What familiar is likened onto, a closeness, a bond, a trust. And it comes to pass <laughs> when you're when you are steadfast, when your when your eye and mind is set upon the Lord Jesus Christ. These who have devils, who see devils, who hear from devils, who's, who devils appear to them. You know that spirit that's in some of these charismatics. Is that the spirit of God, or a familiar spirit? Hmm. Interesting. Now, Jeremiah chapter 20. Jeremiah chapter 20. Here is the plural uh, appearance of the word familiar, which is familiars. This is the only time this appears in the scripture. Look at now, we're only going to look at two verses. Okay, and with what we looked at in Job and what we looked at in Psalm 41, okay, we ought to get a very good picture and idea of what it means to, according to scripture, what it means familiar. Okay? And like I said, uh, with the exception here of Job and Psalm, okay? Um, and you can please check me out. Uh, with Job and Psalm, that's the only time that the word familiar appears outside of being a familiar spirit. Okay? Okay, we, there are some here in Isaiah that we will be looking at, okay? And uh, like I said, excuse me, I might be wrong on that, but I, um, I, don't, I, I'm, I don't think I am about uh, spirit not being attached to familiar only in two places with Job and Psalms, okay? And also here in familiars, check this out. Jeremiah 20, verses 10 and 11. For I heard the defaming of many. Fear on every side. Report, say they, and we will report it. All my familiars 
wa watched from my halting, saying, Peradventure, he will be enticed, and we shall prevail against him, and we shall take our revenge on him. Those who were close to you, those who you trusted. So, a familiar, familiars, a familiar spirit, one that is close, one that is personal, one that you are aware of, one that maybe someone has trusted or something like that. And we saw, we saw in Leviticus 19, 31, we're looking at how the scripture defines the word familiar. So a familiar spirit, which the Lord says is, no, 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 hmm. Verse 11, but the Lord is with me as a mighty terrible one. Therefore, my persecutor shall stumble. You will. And they shall not prevail. Yes, because if this counsel or work be of men, it will come to naught. But, it is, uh, but if it is of the Lord, you could have nothing, you could do nothing against me unless it were given to you from above. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. They shall be greatly ashamed, for they shall not prosper. Their everlasting confusion shall never be forgotten. So, the word itself, familiar, denotes what? A personal aspect, a closeness, trusting. So, we'll now go back to Leviticus 19, verse 31, okay? So, again, at the first reference, first appearance of the word familiar in Leviticus 19, verse 31, okay? Familiar. What is this spirit familiar with? Leviticus 19, 31. Regard not them that have familiar spirits. And we, we just looked in Scripture... How scripture, our Lord, through scripture, defines familiar in context, okay, as to what familiar is about, okay? But yet, familiar spirits, a spirit that is close, that you recognize, hmm. Obviously, a familiar spirit is what? A devil? Obviously, well, it says familiar spirits. Uh, yes, yes. It says familiar spirits. But that is not the Spirit of God, is it? No. And if it's not the Spirit of God, then what else could it be? Spirit of the beast that goes downward to the earth? Spirit of man, which is the spirit of this world, which is that spirit of Antichrist? Hmm. Regard not them that have familiar spirits, Neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. So someone who has a familiar spirit or seeks familiar spirits or goes after wizards, it defiles you. Hmm. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I'm going to submit to you that someone who is looking for that thing that makes them of the esoteric crowd, that thing that they can lay upon others, well, I've seen the Lord. I, I, I hear from him audibly. And I, okay, yeah, we're, we're brethren, but I have this little extra thing that you didn't get. Maybe, maybe because to be, I thought the Lord wasn't a respecter of persons. But yet he's a respecter of persons to you, because the Lord appeared to you and speaks to you audibly. Hmm. I'm going to submit to you that these people who call themselves Christians, who are deceived by devils, are quite readily easy to receive a familiar spirit. And then when they come across those who have the spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit, it confounds them. And sooner or later, they will turn on you. Oh, absolutely. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 
1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10, on to verse 16. Oh, let's read verse 9 on to verse 16 instead, okay? But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. That love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his, capital S, Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Okay, now, now, now hold up a minute. His Spirit, the Lord is that Spirit, the Holy Ghost. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. The deep things of God. And within the scriptures. But yet you, you don't read the scriptures that much, do you? Hmm. But yet God appears to you. You're seeing all these spiritual things. You're hearing voices. Hmm. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. The deep things of God. You want to know who God is? Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. You search the scriptures. You're depending on your emotions, your sensationalism, your feelings, your sight. You're not, you're not dealing with God. You're dealing with this familiar spirit. You're dealing with an angel of light. And who is that angel of light? For Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. And no marvel that his ministers are transformed into the ministers of righteousness. Hmm. Let's continue. For what man knoweth the things of man save the lowercase s spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth, man, knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now, note the differences in the capitals there, okay? The spirit of man. The spirit of man. We're, 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 we're going to get on to that really next, okay? About what, what is the spirit of man? We're not going to go through the scriptures and define every spirit, okay? It's simple, okay? It's simple. There are prevailing. There are two spirits. God is a spirit. Oh, the spirit of the beast that goes down to the earth. God, the father of spirits. Yes, yes. But there is that spirit of antichrist. The spirit of the beast that goes downward to the earth. Okay? Go downward to the earth. Okay? Yes. My little dog, Zena, has, a, has her spirit. Doesn't have a soul. Okay? All right? That, never mind that. But what is the spirit of man? We're going to get to this here in a minute. But look at that verse. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. The spirit of God. See, the spirit of man, the natural man, cannot understand the things of the Lord. I mean, oh, oh, there, there's a level to where they can go, but what does it say in verse 10? For the spirit, capital S, searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God, okay? These fakes, these infiltrators, these coadjutors, they can have, they can know some things that are readily easy to be received in black and white, but the deeper things of God, the, the spirit of man cannot know that. Even the familiar spirit that is in some of you, which is actually that spirit of Antichrist, okay? Why? Because that spirit of Antichrist is in the world, Okay, let's, let's continue. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world. What's the world made out of? Rocks. Yes. Dirt. Too. Come on, let's, let's keep going. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world, okay, 
But the spirit which is of God, now that is talking about him, the spirit which is of God. Something that he gives. He gives himself. Okay? This is talking about him transferring, giving to you, sealing you. Okay? Now we have received not the spirit of this world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Okay? If you're lost, if you're charismatic, Catholic, or whatever you are, you're not going to get this, unfortunately. Why? <laughs> because uh, uh, for what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man which is in him, you know only what you can know naturally or reveal to you by the devil. For the spirit... Uh, for even so, excuse me, even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Okay, let's continue. Which things we also speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost, Ghost teacheth, excuse me, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. See, the authorized version of the scriptures is a spiritual book. Why? Because the Holy Ghost is that, you know, the Spirit of God. The Holy Ghost, our Lord Jesus Christ, he wrote this book. The Bibles, such as the NIV, the non-King James Version, the ESV, the MEV, and NASB, the uh, MacArthur's uh, LSB, not LSD, excuse me, okay? Um, yeah, the Spirit that is in them is that spirit of the world. And who is the little G-God of this world? That be Satan. And that spirit of Antichrist is in the world right now. And man is earthly at his inception. We're born sinners, aren't we? If you say no, oh boy, you, you got some problems. <laughs> but we're born sinners. We're all born sinners. And there's a natural birth that comes first, and you read about this in 1 Corinthians 15, and then there is a spiritual birth talking about when, you know, when the Lord saves you and you are born again. Hmm. So, things that are different are not the same, but they have the same source from which they come. Hmm. But see, the spirit that is within us, the Holy Ghost, our Lord Jesus Christ, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. The authorized version of the scriptures is God's book. You, who sees devils, the devil appeared to, the devil speak to you. You're tormented by familiar spirits. Spirit is in you is one likened unto the books, such as the Bibles. You know, the NIV, the ESV, and so on and so forth. Yeah, that spirit of Antichrist is what wrote the Bibles, where God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, wrote the scriptures. Comparing spiritual things, the Lord in you, with spiritual things, his book. And see, verse 10, But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. And you are to search the Scriptures daily, whether these things are so. Dear, dear friends, dear friends, again, if you are relying on a sensationalism, your sight, you are not, that's not the Lord. Okay? That's not the Lord. Signs and wonders do not happen today as they did in the book of Acts. Okay? They don't. They had a purpose. The purpose was fulfilled. Okay? And things add that were in another dispensation, such as the coming and going, and the anointing is on me, uh, and stuff like that. No. No. You are greatly deceived. Let's continue. Verse 14. Familiar spirit. But the natural man, unregenerate, Earthly, receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. 
But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he, he himself is judged of no man. Spirit, I, I'm not religious, I'm spiritual. Okay, good for you. Good for you. Uh, uh, what is the word of God? Any Bible will do. There is no perfect word of God. You know, it's the, the originals. And we need Jesuit scholars like James White to tell. Yeah. 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 You know not what manner of spirit ye are. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. You who are plagued by these familiar spirits, who devils appear to you, and devils speak to you, okay? Like I said, uh, as concerning ghosts and hauntings, yes, that stuff happens today. Yes, that can even happen unto those of the church of the living God. But to be constantly plagued, tormented by them, to always be seeing them, when you're always seeing things on the spiritual realm, that, that's a problem. That's a problem. And I'm going to submit unto you the reason why you're seeing that because you are of the world and the world loves his own. You're not saved. Like I said, those are the church of the living God. We can encounter devils. Yes, we can. Ghosts and poltergeists. You got if if it's happening, you got to figure out why. Are you are there portals, doors open for these devils? Or are you actually even saved? Now, familiar, familiar spirit. And it says here the natural man and the spirit of man, spirit of the world, and that kind of different spirits. But, hmm, what is with this? Go to Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. Now, if you're not rightly dividing the word of truth, you're going to come into all kinds of problems with this kind of stuff. Okay? Genesis chapter 3 is talking about the fall of man. When man disobeyed what God said and went and ate the fruit of the tree. Eating the actual fruit, the fruit itself is insignificant to the fact that they disobeyed God. Okay, Satan came along onto Eve, yea, hath God said, which is all this charismatic nonsense is anyway. Okay, but Genesis chapter 3, verses 17 on to verse 19. And this is after the curse. Okay? Oh, this is the curse. Okay. The Lord goes to Adam. What'd you do? What did Adam do? The woman you gave me. She gave me of the tree and I did eat. <laughs> Way to go, Adam. The woman. The devil made me do it. Genesis chapter 3. Spirit of man. See, before the fall, there was no sin. But after the disobedience, sin came in. Hence, the spirit of man, which is the spirit of this world. Because what is man made out of? What is the world made out of? Stones. It's not stones comprised of compressed dirt. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, man is supposed to be the head, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. Thorns and thistles that choke you. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. And thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread. Till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken. For dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. Hmm. Hmm. And, and go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. 
And the Lord God formed a man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils. You know, nostrils, these things that are associated with the nose, nose which is associated with the face, face and head associated with what? A body. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living spirit? No. A living, don't look at me, a living what? A living soul. God creates the soul. Very interesting. And looking in uh, Genesis chapter 3, verse 19, For out of it thou wast taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. Uh, hold your place here, because we're coming back, and go to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16, verses 21 on to verse 23. Matthew chapter 16, verses 21 on to verse 23. Our Lord, you know, said to Peter, uh, Blessed art thou, Shimon bar Jonah, uh, flesh and blood have, hasn't revealed this unto you but my Father. And then, from that time forth, from that time forth began Jesus to shew unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and raised again the third day. Then Peter who then Peter took him, who apparently were looking forward to the cross all the way from the beginning of Genesis, right? Yeah. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. Hmm. Kind of like, you know, if you're the Son of God, make these... Uh, stone's bread, or, okay, hey, cast yourself down. Don't worry, huh? A very similar kind of temptation there. Coming from Peter. Why? But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan! For thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. What is man? Go back to Genesis chapter 3. What is man? Verse 19, Genesis 3. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken. For dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. Now, we are made in the image of God. We have a spirit, we have a soul, and we have a body. And our spirit and soul are housed within this body. Man, God breathed breath, okay, signifying breath, the spirit that moves, okay, um, the spirit that moves across the water, and man became a living soul, okay, okay, but our body is made of what? Dust, and Satan savors not the things that be of God, but the things that be of man. Genesis chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. Right, right above. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, that serpent who is Satan, we're, we're, we're going to look at that, okay? Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Dust. We're dust. And Satan who walks to and fro uh, in the earth, who walks about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Oh, and he has devoured some of you, dear Pentecatholics, you dear Charismatics, with your nonsensical uh, ideologies and beliefs, your esoteric thing that you're special, that God is suddenly a respecter of persons, huh? Ah, he's devoured you. He's captured you. You're taken. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. 
it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise thy heel. And of course, verse 15, we've talked about this before, very first prophecy of scripture regarding our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Okay? All right? That's what that is uh, talking about. All right? So, Satan devours man. Hmm. Hmm. Go to Ephesians chapter 4. Go to Ephesians chapter 4. You might be saying, Brad, what, what does this have to do with a familiar spirit? What is a familiar spirit familiar with? A familiar, close, personal, but what is a familiar spirit familiar with that it defiles you? A familiar spirit is a familiar spirit of God? No. No. So what is a familiar spirit? Familiar, close, personal, aware. Maybe trusting in, maybe? Huh? You seeking the wizards, huh? Huh? So what is a familiar spirit familiar with? Hmm. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 17. Beg your pardon. On to verse 24. This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. <laughs> okay? Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Oh, they, you can see. Your eyes are open because you took the bait of Satan doesn't say anything about the blindness of your eyes because your eyes are open. God appeared to you. No, he didn't. God spoke to me audibly. No, he didn't. God revealed himself to me in a dream. No, he didn't. God gave me extra revelation outside of scripture. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Your heart is blind because you want to puff yourself up because you're a special one. Because God is suddenly a respecter of persons who gave to you what he doesn't give to the rest of those who are of the church of the living God. You know, the faith that was once uh, delivered onto the saints. No, but God's a respecter of person when it comes to you. <laughs> With your prayer language. That's coming in another video too. Okay, but let's continue. So your heart is blinded because it's puffed up because you had an extra sensory uh, revelation. You saw something. No, you didn't. Oh, oh, oh. You, you saw something. You didn't see God, but yes, you, you, you sure did see something. I'm not denying that at all. I ain't calling you a liar. You saw something. You did not see God. You did not see God. You're not hearing from God. No, you're not. No, you're not. Okay, let's continue. Who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. Uncleanness. Uncleanness. Hold your place here. Go to Psalm <laughs> Verse 19, <laughs> Psalm 19, check this out, uncleanness. And if you mess with those who have familiar spirits, or go to wizards and stuff like that, enchanters, we're going to look at that, it defiles you. It makes you what? Unclean. Okay? Uh, Psalms 19, come on, fingers work with me. Psalm 19, verses 7 on to verse 11. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Okay? Where do we read of the law? Where do we have the testimony of the Lord? Right here in Scripture. But see, through your devilish sensory perception, okay? <laughs> Evil sensory perception, right? Okay? Through, through that stuff, you're neglecting actual 
Dude, if you actually took time and spent it reading the scriptures, if the Lord is in you, which I doubt, if the Lord is in you, uh, he would he would just rip you to shreds. I didn't appear to you. You, you know, through the scriptures? No. He didn't appear to you. Why, why do you think these spirits, these devils, want to keep so many of you away from the scriptures? Why do so many of you get offended when you got someone calling you to account? Hey, read the book! But no, no, you come up with excuses. I, I did, we, we, we talked about this, yes, yes, okay, we've talked about some of your excuses. N none, nonetheless, even if you're suffering, you ought to read it. I know, like I said in the previous video, there are some exceptions. Okay, still, nonetheless. Okay? You're, re you're relying on your senses. You're not relying on God. Plain as day. Okay? The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Fear of the Lord is what? Clean. Enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Gold and the honeycomb, sweet things. That Satan, you know, all this will I give you. If you fall down and worship me, all will be thine. Yes. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Now, the looking at the context here, what do we got? We have law, we have testimony, we have statutes, we have commandments, we have what? Judgments. Statutes, commandments, precepts, testimonies, judgments. Hmm? Precepts, is that in there? No, but law is. Okay? Law is. Absolutely. But, and the fear of the Lord is clean. The fear of the Lord is clean. But in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 19, who being past feeling, have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. Why? Because your heart is blind. You're, you're blinded in heart. You think what you're seeing is God or is of God. It's not. And you don't know that because you're not in the scriptures. You're not conversant. You're not familiar with the scriptures. But you're familiar with the spirit? What spirit? <laughs> it ain't the spirit of God. I can tell you that. I can tell you that. Let's continue in Ephesians. But ye have not so learned Christ. How are you to learn of Christ? L learn of me, he says. What is, uh, hold your place. What is that? Matthew 11, right? Right? Matthew 11. <laughs> you have not so learned Christ. Okay? Matthew 11. <laughs> Verses 28 under verse 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. It does not say from him. Yes, we learn from the Lord. The Holy Ghost is that from the Lord is that spirit who leads us and guides us into all truth. But we are to learn of him. Of him. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Rest for your souls. How you, how's your resting going, huh? Well, if you're seeing the, the grudge ghost constantly, yeah, what kind of rest are you having? Why is that? Why is that? Hmm. Yes. But ye have not so learned Christ. How do you learn of Christ? Going off of experience, feelings, Sensationalism, you, you're, you're not hearing from the Lord. Sorry. 
Sorry to break that to you. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. So here speaking audibly to you. No. How do you hear the Lord? Uh, well, okay. So, okay. If so that ye have heard him audibly. No, then, okay. What about blindness of heart? Huh? Uh, you're blind in heart, but yet you can see with your eyes. You hear the Lord, but you don't hear him audibly with the ear. Huh? What's with you? You do anything to justify yourself. I, I have a pride problem. I struggle daily, every single day with my pride. Okay? It is the height of pride. Well, the Lord appeared unto me, and not to you. Even though some of you are not like that. But, I mean, come on. You, you know, use your head a little bit. Okay? That is the height of arrogancy. Well, God, God, God's apparently a respecter of persons because he appeared to me and he didn't appear on you. I hear him and you don't hear him. So you must not be saved, right? If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him and the Holy Ghost will guide you into all truth. Okay? The Lord is that spirit. As the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. In the Garden of Eden, lust. Satan, the see that, you eat that, you disobey everything that uh, the Lord said, but go ahead and eat that. It's good for food, it looks good, and it'll make you wise. Lust. Covet, greed, I want, I want, I want. Okay? That you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. The old man. That old man has nothing to do with your age. That is who you are at your birth. The old man, that Adam. The first man was earthly, of the earth. Unregenerate, natural. That's what that means, okay? which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. Garden of Eden, which, uh, which we, we looked at a portion of that. Uh, yea, hath God said? And then Satan's like, go ahead and eat that of the tree. And then Eve saw, oh, wow, that looks good. That looks good. That looks uh, so beautiful. Look at it. Oh, it's probably good to eat, too. And hey, make me wise. Open your eyes. But be blind in heart. Hmm. Okay? And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. The spirit of your mind. But you have a familiar spirit. What is this familiar spirit familiar with, dear brethren? Hmm? Well, it is acquainted with the things of God. It's not familiar with the things of God. Neither can it be. A familiar spirit is familiar with what? The things of the world, the flesh, the devil. And it defiles you, does it not? Hmm. Let's continue. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Old man, go to Revelation chapter twenty, uh, chapter twelve. Old, old man, old man. Satan was in the Garden of Eden. Through Satan's temptation, at a gunpoint, Eve disobeyed, gave the fruit to her husband, and boom, here we are today. And because of that disobedience, sin was brought in. Hence. The old man that needs to be crucified is that unregenerate man, Adam, that is you, unregenerate. And see, Satan with his antichrist spirit, he is antichrist, obviously. 
Okay, not the Antichrist. The Antichrist is not in Scripture, but that Antichrist spirit, which is replacement and also a copycat. Okay, against and replace. Okay, against it and replacement. Okay, but the old man. Uh, Revelation twelve verse nine. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent. How old? Oh, from the beginning of the scriptures. Called the devil and Satan. Satan means what? The accuser of the brethren. Okay? The accuser of the brethren. Like Mr. M up in Canada. The accuser of the brethren. Yeah. Which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. That old serpent. Hmm. That old serpent. Yes. And Revelation chapter 20, verses 1 and 2. Revelation chapter 20, verses 1 and 2. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Hmm. So that old man that we are to crucify, tie that in with the old, uh, with that old serpent, uh, back to the Garden of Eden, showing us what? The old man is the flesh. That Adam, who, when caught, it's like, it was the woman, it's your fault, you gave me the woman, yeah, I sinned, but it's basically your fault and the woman's. That Adamic old man, see, okay? So, a familiar spirit, which defiles you, is familiar with the old man, the things of the world, while acquainted with things of God, because it's Antichrist. See? One and a little bit. Go to Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. You deal with Romans chapter 6 when the Lord has saved someone. Romans chapter 6, verses 1 on to verse 6. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Putting off that old man. Okay? We're still going to sin. There is no such thing as sinless perfection. That's a lie. Okay? But we are not bound. We are not bound to that sin anymore. Okay? We're not bound to it, even though we're going to sin every day. Okay? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Baptized in that context is an identification. Identified with what? Baptized into his death. Identified into his death. He died, buried and rose again the third day according to the scripture. This is talking about something dying that we become a new creature. That old man. That old serpent. Did you see the tie-in? Okay. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. Scripture is explaining it itself. So I'll just shut up. Okay. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his re resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin, the body of sin, might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. And the body of sin, and this is a stumbling block for so many people for some reason, especially, uh, you know, Catholics and Charismatics too, okay? And even so, supposed um, Rukmanite King James Bible-believing Christians too. Uh, Romans chapter 8, verses 1 on to verse 4. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, the, fre the flesh profiteth nothing. 
If the flesh profited something, the disciples would have been biting Christ at the Last Supper. Okay? For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. You people don't want to get it because you're Catholic. See, the Gnostic flesh became God, not God became flesh. These people are exalting flesh just like the devil exalts flesh, people. Okay? Warning. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So a familiar spirit is familiar with what? The things of the world, the things of the flesh. Familiar. Because it's a familiar spirit well, associated with wither, wizards and it defiles. Hmm. And in Titus, he uh, talks about hating even the garment uh, spotted by the flesh or defiled, you could say, maybe. Hmm. Hmm. Go to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 11. Now, the contrast is that we're looking at, okay? Someone who has a familiar spirit, yet and is acquainted with the ways of God, but not familiar with them. They are familiar with the spirit, and a familiar spirit is as familiar with what? The things of the world. Things of the world, the flesh, the devil, things of the earth. While the spirit of God is familiar, conversant with the things of God. And that spirit of God will have you to go deep within the scripture. Well, that spirit of Antichrist, let's continue. But ye there be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love, as Christ as also as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. But fornication, fornication is not always physical. It's not always physical. It's outside of marriage, okay? Adultery is you cheating on someone you're married to. Fornication is before you're married, okay? You're fornicating, okay? There's a difference. But fornication and all uncleanness, and we already looked about uh, what is clean, the fear of the Lord, okay? Or covetousness. I, I got to hear a fresh revelation. I haven't seen the Lord in a long... I only saw it once. But see, that's covetousness. That's pride. You try to mask it by pretending to be so humble. But deep down, deep down... Come on now. You're, you're esoteric. God's a respecter of persons because he showed himself to you. Not to other people. While you might yourself would dare to be like that. And you mask. And these people mask that kind of thing very well. Through philanthropy. And many other ways. But fornication and uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become a saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, nor unclean person defiled by devils or an, or a familiar spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Brad, aren't we supposed to be familiar with the Spirit of God? But Scripture plainly says what a familiar spirit is. And 
you know, when you're supposedly saved and you see the Lord, um, new things, but yet it's all familiar in context to worldly things. They're, the awakening that these people have, these charismatics and all these nonsense stem from worldly things. Their convulsions and their speaking, those are things of flesh. The spirit that brings that on is that spirit of Antichrist. Those are fleshly things. Those are worldly things. Okay? They are. Look at it. Okay? The tongue talking, slaying in the spirit, the convulsing, the, it's, it's all made to make you look like a fool, number one, but it's all a means for you to what? To exalt yourself as a special one. That's fleshly. That's of the earth. Okay? For this ye know that no whoremonger nor unclean person nor covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Children of disobedience, you heard the truth, but you don't want to do it. You heard the true gospel, but you would rather trust that God appeared to you, that you're hearing from him. Yeah. Yeah. And then he reveals, <laughs> again, he reveals something to you that is totally outside of scripture and nonsense. And that's the, no, that's that spirit of Antichrist. You have a familiar spirit. Okay. <laughs> All right. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. And you can watch the previous video. This does not mean that we are walking around as little illuminated, illuminated light bulbs. That is insanity. Okay? Prove it to yourself. Church of the living God. Uh, ask a lost person. Do you see a light going around me? Am I light? Am I lit up like a Christmas tree? Yeah, they, they, they'll definitely get away. Like, okay, man. Yeah, they'll definitely take a couple steps back from you when you come up. But, but do that. It's absurd. It's absolute nonsense. We talked about that in the previous video. I'm not going to go off on that. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Which is what I'm doing. I'm reproving them. The unfruitful works of darkness. What kind of fruit have you with that nonsense? Hmm? Well, did you get an extra revelation or something? Second Peter chapter 2. Second Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 on to verse 19. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations, and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness. And the fear of the Lord, that is clean. The lusts of uncleanness following your signs, your wonders, and your emotionalism, and your sensationalism, that's uncleanness. It's not the fear of the Lord. And despise government. That's talking about self-government, by the way. Presumptuous are they, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Whereas angels which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. But these as natural brute beasts, natural, earthly, sensual, devilish, unregenerate, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things they, that they understand not, because they're spiritually discerned. More on this in a little bit. And shall utterly perish in their own corruption. And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness. As they that counted pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are. And blemishes sporting themselves with their own deceivings. 
while they feast with you. This tells us that they will be amongst us. These deceivers. Deceived. Being deceived. Absolutely. Having eyes full of adultery and cannot cease from sin. Beguiling unstable souls and heart they have exercised with covetous practices. Cursed children. Because the ground is cursed. But yet you're hearing these voices. You're seeing the grudge ghost. And, and yet you're, God appeared to... With those people, and it's been quite a few, who have, I've known, who have claimed to have seen God, without exception, every single one of them is also experiencing poltergeist activity on a regular basis. On a regular basis. Like I said, there's, there's a brother of ours who lives out uh, northeast who has had ghost stuff happen in his house. But what does he do? He does what, like, he, he gets like, <laughs> at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, okay? He, he does what he's supposed to. He's not plagued by it. It's not a regular occurrence to him, okay? All right? See, they won't touch us unless the Lord allows it, okay? Yeah, those who have apparently seen God, without exception, everyone that I've met who's claimed that, they all have some weird poltergeist kind of stuff going on with them. Why is that? Think and repent, dear friends. We, we as a church of the living God, we do not want to have eyes to see into the spiritual realm. Okay? Yeah, there are spirits, devils, maybe, around us all the time. Okay? Yes. We're, we're on, enem on the enemy's territory. But you don't want to see that. I don't want to see that. And when you get a glimpse of it, yeah, it terrifies you. But if that's something that's happening to you on a regular basis, there's a problem there. There's either a door open for them, which maybe you can't control, yes, or that spirit that you think you saw is not God, but rather the devil, and the world loves his own. Which have forsaken the right way and are gone, oh, Ed, what did we, um, Yes, we read a little verse. Which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumb, not being able to speak, ass, donkey, speaking with man's voice, uh, ass is female and mule is male, as I understand it, okay? But was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumb, not being able to speak, ass, donkey, Speaking with man's voice for bad, the madness of the prophet. These are wells, deep wells, yes, without water. Clouds that are carried with the tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For while they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, have a spiritual experience have religiosity, putting on the suit, putting on the tie, going to the building, doing yada, 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 fleshly things. Okay? For though they speak great words, swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. Praise the Lord. While they promised themselves charity, they, <coughs> excuse me, Yea, hath God said, right? Shh, shh. While they promised them liberty, hmm. <laughs> they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, the same as he is of the same as he brought in bondage. Of course, you go to uh, Romans chapter 6, verse 16, I believe that is. Let's go there. Romans chapter 6, I believe that's verse 16. Uh, know ye not 
that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness? Well, I don't talk with the devil often. Yes, you do. Because if you came to your faith because of your sight and your spiritual experiences, you're not saved. You can have the right doctrine. You can believe the right things. But how you come, how you come to the Lord is very important. <laughs> you have to come on his terms. And his terms are breaking. Okay? Yes, he, we, we, I'm not even going to get into it. They're going to be in the description box. Okay? You charismatics are going to cling to this nonsense of yours with a death grip. And unfortunately, for the most of you, you will find out at the judgment seat of Christ. Or, excuse me, <laughs> the great white throne of judgment. Because you think you're going to be at the judgment seat of Christ. But no, if God appeared to you and you're... No, no, dear friend. You're not headed for the judgment seat of Christ. You're headed for the great white throne. And very quickly, Jude 16. I almost said <laughs> Jude 16. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. John chapter 15. See, a familiar spirit is familiar with the things of the world. And as uh, you go ahead and do the work yourself, you look up familiar, familiar spirit. Okay. Um, it defiles you. It is clearly spoken against. Okay. It is clearly spoken against. Okay. So, a familiar spirit, one that are the your old man is acquainted with not not acquainted with familiar with okay a familiar spirit is familiar with what the things of the world things of the earth things of the flesh things of the devil okay john chapter 15 verses 18 and 19 if the world hates you you know that it hated me before it hated you if you were of the world the world would love his own but because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Well, I'm hated by the world. Well, when you stand for right things, yes, 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 that's true, yes. But there again, also your attitude can also persuade that. But right down deep at it, you're of the world. And worldly things are happening to you. The worldly things are happening to, unto all of us. But see, while you might put off the facade that, yes, you are not of the world. No, you are actually of the world. Why? Because that spirit of Antichrist, that familiar spirit that is with you, is that spirit of who? Satan. The world. Okay? And the world loves his own. You're not a threat to the devil. Especially because devils are appearing to you and seeing, and you're seeing them and hearing from them. You're not a threat to the devil. You're not. You're not. The contrast is Romans 12. Okay? Romans 12. I don't hang out with worldly people, lost people. I don't fellowship with lost people. Okay? I don't. I don't. Do you? As a church, we are in the world. We are not of the world. Okay? We are there to be a witness and a testimony unto the lost. But, you know, I don't fellowship with the lost. Do you? Do you? Romans chapter 12, verses 9 on verse 13. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Extreme hatred mean, is what abhor means. 
Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. I want to be in fellowship with my brethren, with my friends. And that list keeps shrinking, <laughs> but I want that. You know, that's why um, uh, Brother Alexander Hartley, okay, my brother from out north, from northeast, brother from North Dakota, brother from Ohio, okay, brother, brethren from overseas, okay, brother from Oregon, okay. I want that. Don't really have all that much time, but I, I want that. We preferring one another. We want to be amongst our own, just like those of the world. They want to be among their own. Okay? Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, and our Lord Jesus is our hope. Patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. Distributing to the necessity, not wants. Wants are many, needs are few. So we are to prefer one another. See, see the contrast? Those Christians, charismatics, these church-building Christian people, they're of the world. Therefore, the world hears them. Even, even some of them who try to disassociate them, they're still of the world. Why? Because they, have a, they, have, uh, they are conversant with a familiar spirit. That spirit that in, is in them is that spirit of the world, that spirit of Antichrist. They are not a new man. They are the old man still, just dressed up with some religiosity and a whole bunch of religious, emotional, visual, uh, sensory experiences. Distinction. See, we are to stick with our own kind. What better way to prove, show that with uh, this? Those fake Christians, well, fake Christians, those Christians, be with your Christians. Even you, uh, Ruckmanite, uh, um, King James Bible believing Christians, <laughs> you can be Catholic for a day. Yeah, go ahead, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, go ahead. You, you be amongst yourselves. We have the church of the living God. We're going to be amongst ourselves. Distinction. Now, go back to Leviticus chapter 20. Uh, to Leviticus, to Leviticus chapter 20. Okay? Leviticus chapter 20, verses 1 under verse 6. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Again, thou shalt say to the children of Israel, Whosoever he be of the children of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn in Israel, that giveth any of his seed unto Moloch, he shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. Moloch. And I will set my face against that man, and will cut him off from among his people, because he hath given of his seed unto Moloch, to defile my sanctuary and to profane my holy name. And if the people of the land do, do any ways hide their eyes from the man, when he giveth of his seed unto Moloch, and kill him not, then I will set my face against that man, and against his family, and will cut him off, and all that go a-whoring after him, to commit whoredom with Moloch from among their people. And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits, and after wizards, to go a-whoring after them, so you're, you're committing whoredom when going after, seeking after familiar spirits. Okay? I will even set my, my face against that soul dispensational difference here. And will cut him off from among his people. See, familiar spirits is mentioned in the Old Testament, but not in the New. But yet it doesn't... <laughs> uh, we are not said, oh, it's okay now to go ahead and be with familiar spirits. No. It's binding still. It was never undone. It was, it was only mentioned once and, uh, the, you know, in the respect of being warned against it, okay? 
not being mentioned again because it doesn't have to because it isn't undone. Okay, it's not okay to go after familiar spirits or to be with wizards. Okay, yes, you have liberty to do as you will. Yes, you do. But be careful. Be careful of how you use that liberty, which is derived from God's charity. But liberty is not charity. They're two different things, Mr. Thompson. How would you know that, though? Yeah. All right. Well, here, verses 25 and 27 in Leviticus chapter 20. Ye shall therefore put difference between unclean fowls and clean. Oh, distinction. Yes, this is talking about fowls, but for a little instruction in righteousness. The fear of the Lord, that is clean. What is to be unclean? Mingle yourselves in the, the world and fear man, the devil, and that kind of stuff. We're to put difference between the clean and the unclean. Hmm. And ye shall not make your souls abominable by beast or by fowl or by manner of or by any manner of living thing that creepeth on the ground, which I have separated from you as unclean. And ye shall be holy unto me, for I, the Lord, am holy, and have served, severed you from other people, that ye should be mine. And we as the church of the living God, yes, that seal, he has severed us from the world. Yes, yes, yes. But amongst the church of the living God, God is not a respecter of persons unless he appears unto you personally, right? Yeah. A man also or woman that hath a familiar spirit or that is a weird wizard so see you can have a familiar spirit and what is that spirit familiar with that shall surely be put to death they shall stone them with stones their blood shall be upon them we we, we don't vengeance is the lord's by the way okay we're not to do that but when you come across these people who have that Cut them off. Cut them off. Once you are made aware of it, the extent of it, praise the Lord for it. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18. There, there's a lot more that we can get into this, but we're just keeping this basic. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 9 under verse 14. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. The Kundalini spirit, you know, the jerks and the talking and the blah, 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 blah. Um, that was occultic long, long ago. Okay? So that occultism, that devil, Okay, that, that stuff has been brought in. Okay? Azusa Street. The Methodists. Okay? We are not supposed to what? Do after the, learn to do after the abominations of those nations. Okay? We're not supposed to, we're not supposed to be like the world. We're not supposed to learn the ways of the heathen. Okay? Heathens, such as Catholics, and all their precious little holy days. Okay. There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire. Holy fire! Yeah. Or that uses divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God, not being mingled with that kind of perverse stuff. 
For these nations, which thou shalt possess, hearkened unto observers of times and unto diviners. But as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee to do so. Let them do what they will do. Let them worship Moloch. But we're not supposed to be like that. And, and you look at this list here, okay? Pass through the fire. The, sm the snake handlers down south who rub, you know, uh, there's that video where a guy kneeling over uh, a flame and he's taking it and rubbing it on him and praying. Horrifying things. And they also drink actual literal strychnine. Yeah, yeah. Look at these lists, okay? Uh, one that useth divination. An observer of times. Oh, like we're supposed to observe the winter solstice? Hmm. Okay. Or an enchanter. Or a witch. Or a charmer. Like a lot of these uh, prophetic women are. Yeah. Or a consulter with a familiar spirit. Or a wizard. Or a necromancer. One who talks with the dead. Do you realize within the charismatic movement alone, all these, <laughs> all these veiled as something else, all these are present within the charismatic movement of today? Do you realize that? This is basically the charismatic movement today. I hope you realize that. I hope you realize that. Okay? Uh, now, go to James chapter 3. You know, uh, also, I mean, you talk about, you, you look up in 1 Samuel chapter 28 about Saul going to the fam uh, woman of Endor with her familiar spirit. Okay? And you also got to remember about Saul. Uh, the spirit of the Lord departed from him and an evil spirit troubled him. Different dispensation. Okay? The Holy Ghost was not a permanent resident within the dispensation of the law in which Saul, King Saul, lived. Okay? Totally different dispensation. Got this written down here, but we're not going to look at that. Okay? But go to James. James chapter 3. James chapter 3. Verses 13 on to verse 18. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him shew out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Okay? Remember, we have been saved on to good works. Okay? God doesn't save you to just sit idly. Okay? Some can mimic good works, but yet be lost. Very interesting. Okay? But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish, such as with the charismatics. That wisdom that they have is earthly, sensual, led by their senses, earthly, of the earth, devilish. Earthly, sensual, devilish. I think that's a pretty good definition of what a familiar spirit actually entails. Because that old man that is of the earth, earthly. See? For where, okay. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. You, you look at these charismatics, they have no peace. Oh, I have pace. No, you don't. No, you don't. People like Joyce Meyer, they just got money. Money is not peace. Because they make themselves wings and fly away. <laughs> just like the spirit that comes and goes, comes and goes with these wicked charismatics. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. Now, some familiar things here. Sensual, earthly, earthly. 
concentrated and centered on earthly, worldly things, things that pertain to flesh. How, there are so many of these coadjutors working for the Jesuit order who are actually Gnostics that flesh became God. God became flesh. Flesh did not become God. Okay? Flesh. Flesh. What, like, when did Christ become God? When the Holy Ghost came down on him? Uh, no, when he was conceived in the womb by the Holy Ghost, he was God. God. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. The Word was made flesh. See, these devils, they twist that, and they say that flesh became God. It's Gnostic. That's earthly, sensual, devilish. First John chapter 2, verses 18 on to verse 23. Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. And that unction is the Holy Ghost. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Lie, that we're walking little light bulbs that the God appeared to. No lie is of the truth. You can listen to your scorby as background noise and not get into the scriptures. Because if you get into the scriptures, if the Lord is truly in there. How can two, uh, uh, Amos chapter 3, verse 3. How can two walk together except they be agreed? If the Lord were truly in you and you were actually diligently searching the scriptures daily, whether these things were so, you'd be, you'd wake up to know it's like, wait a minute. But no, no. There's more hope of a fool than of you. There, there. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Now, a lot of people, go to uh, 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 6. A lot of people, and there, there's the, these devils who for a while there were saying, just because you could say, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, Jesus is the Lord. That proves that you're, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't, okay? That's not even going to go there, okay? But I want us to look at this very quickly. Because these people say that flesh became God. They glorify flesh. But when you look at it, God became flesh. Flesh did not become God. See, they give themselves away in that. Okay? They give them. God became flesh. Flesh did not become God. Okay? There is a difference. That's Gnostic, that's heresy, and that's satanic. That flesh became God. No. What's that? The scriptures. 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 and verse 6. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. And we, we did a video on this a while ago. Uh, this is about those who prophesy. Okay? Many false prophets. You prophesy today because the Lord is in you, speaking to you through the scriptures. And comparing spiritual things, the Lord in you, with spiritual, therefore you hear what the Lord is saying to you through the scriptures. This is talking about those who prophesy, okay? Put the link in the description box for you to go over, okay? Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. I confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. 
is come in the flesh. God was born of a woman under the law, okay? In conception, it was God in Mary's womb. God became flesh. These devils, flesh became God. And you're a heretic. No, you're the heretic. You're the heretic. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Is come. Jesus, Jehovah, saves. That's what Jesus means. Christ, the anointed, or Mashiach, okay? Okay? Is come in the flesh. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. You devils with your skin suit thing, you don't confess. You, you, can, you can easily say it. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. You can say that really easily. But you do not confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. You're turning flesh into God. And that's what you're all about. Making flesh God, not that God was manifest in the flesh. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. Speak of worldly things. Yeah, the world hears them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Mm-hmm. And and Second John chapter seven. Excuse me. Second John verse seven. Second John seven. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver, an antichrist. See what they do is, you can say Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Yes, you can say that. But you don't confess it, meaning Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. No, what do you guys do? Flesh is Jesus Christ, not Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. It's a perverse, warped, twisting, Gnostic teaching that flesh became God, not God became flesh. That's Gnostic. That's heresy. Think about it, if you can think. Think about it. These guys, God became flesh. Yes, God became flesh. These guys, flesh is God. That's Catholic. That's Catholic. Catholics are all about the flesh and the, 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 flesh and the cookie and the wine that they drink because they got to eat the flesh and drink the blood. Isn't that something? So go on, all you devils. Go ahead. You, you don't confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. I confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Yes, I do. God was manifest in the flesh. The Word was made flesh. Yeah, but you guys, flesh became God. Heretics. That's a little side note there for you. Go chew on that. Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 5 on to verse 10. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm. Remember you guys? You guys say that flesh is God. Not that God was in flesh. No, that flesh is God. 
Kind of like your Pope. Okay. And whose heart departeth from the Lord. For he shall be like the, the heath in the desert. And shall not see when good cometh. But shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness. In a salt land and not inhabited. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord. And whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters. And that spreadeth out her roots by the river. And shall not see when he cometh. But her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give to every man according to his ways, and according to the fruit of his doings. Hmm. Very. Very, very interesting, huh? And and Second Timothy chapter three. Second Timothy chapter three. Second Timothy chapter three. Whoops. Second Timothy chapter three. Verses one on to verse five. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, lovers of pleasure is more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, a form of godliness. You, you charismatics, you have a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. Your power comes from Satan. The slain in the spirit. <laughs> Doesn't come from God. True power comes from God. Your power is earthly, sensual, devilish. And uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Verses 1. Oh, on to verse 7. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Charismatics, Catholics, King James Bible-believing Christians too. Yeah. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Seared, not killed. Okay, Can't kill your conscience. You can sear it, but you can't kill it. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Here's where the dietary restrictions are undone. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. You can eat pork today, okay, and shrimp. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereof unto, whereunto thou hast attained. But refuse... Profane and old wives' fables, and exercise thyself rather on to godliness. Profane and old wives' fables. Oh, the Holy Ghost came upon me and I, I gave me this nonsense that you're a walking light bulb. <laughs> God still appears to you today, physically, so you can see him. Yeah. yeah. Dell can't hear you when you speak in your prayer language. That we're gonna talk about that later. From such draw, uh, from such withdraw thyself, brethren. Go to Isaiah chapter eight. Isaiah chapter eight. Isaiah chapter 8. Now check this out. 
Isaiah chapter 8, verses 19 on to verse 22. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep. You know, peep, peep, peep. Okay? Looking into things, yes, but also peep, making a sound. Hmm. And that blah, 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 mutter, visual, uh, audio, uh, audible kind of things, peeping. Peep, yes, can mean uh, t uh, a peeping Tom, yes, peeping into things, yes, but also peeping as sound, a peep kind of sound, you know, little quirky sounds and stuff like that. And that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead? To the law and to the testimony. Where do you find the law and the testimony? The scriptures. If they speak not according to this word. The law and the testimony. If they speak not according to the scriptures. Rightly divided scriptures. Okay? It is because there is no light in them. The devil is the one who gave you that we are walking light bulbs. The Lord Jesus Christ did not give you that. I know you're not watching these videos. I know that. I know that. I know that. But um, maybe one day. I don't know. But the Lord did not give you that. And they shall pass through it, hardly beset and hungry. Why are they hardly beset and hungry? Because they're not to the law and to the testimony. They're not in the scriptures. They're not going by the word. Okay? So when you're not going by the word, what happens? You're beset and hungry. A famine in the land. Amos chapter 8, verses what? Uh, 10 on to verse 12, I believe that is. Good idea. Thank you. Uh, my best friend is like, well, why don't you go there? Thank you. Going to Amos chapter 8. Be set and hungry. Uh, verses 11 and 12. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing of the words of the Lord. And these charismatics, they're not hearing from the Lord. <laughs> not at all. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. Here's the word of the Lord. Okay. Verse 21 in uh, Isaiah chapter 8. And they shall pass through it, be hardly beset and hungry. And it shall come to pass that when they shall be hungry, they shall fret themselves and curse their king and their God and look upward. And they shall look onto the earth. Who is the little G-God of this world? Satan. Lucifer. One, one being. Right? Satan. And what does Satan do? Luke chapter 4. All this will I give unto thee. If you fall down and worship me, all will be thine. And they shall look unto the earth. Things of the earth. Earthly, sensual, devilish. Why? Because they are beset and hungry. Why? Because they're not... To the law and the testimony, and to the testimony, which is found where in the scriptures. And behold, trouble and darkness, darkness of heart, trouble, dimness of anguish, and they shall be driven to darkness. Uh, Isaiah nineteen, Isaiah nineteen. Verses 1 on to verse 4. Isaiah 19, verses 1 on to verse 4. The burden of Egypt in type for us today, our instruction in righteousness in type. Egypt is a type of the world. The burden of Egypt. Behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud and shall come into Egypt. And the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence. And the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. And I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians. Hmm. Those are the world fighting amongst themselves. Hmm. 
and they shall fight every one against his brother, and every one against his neighbor, city against city, and kingdom against kingdom. And the spirit of Egypt, what is the spirit of Egypt? Land of gods and idols? They are of the world, therefore they speak of the world, and the world heareth them. Hmm. Yeah. And the spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof, and I will destroy the counsel thereof, and they shall seek to the idols, and to the charmers, and to them that have familiar spirits, and to wizards. Yes, with all this nonsense that the Jesuits brought upon us, they were going to the Charismatics and stuff like that, going to Catholics. Yeah, you're going to the world to find out the answers of God. When something's happening in your life, you go to a prophet to pray over you. No, you get on your knees and go to the Lord, not to some charismatic nitwit. And the Egyptians will I give over into the hand of a cruel Lord. That's pretty self-explanatory. And a fierce king shall rule over them, saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts. <laughs> Who is the hand of a cruel Lord for our instruction in righteousness? Who is the God of this world? Satan. And who will be his king? That man of sin, the son of perdition. And 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Let's, let's, re, let's reinforce this. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 7. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid... It is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Okay, so how does that light shine there, friend? For we preach, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Christ, for Jesus' sake. Excuse me. So again, the light of God shining upon them is not that our bodies are a little light bulb that's insanity. No, through our preaching, what we speak. Also, by the way we live. That's how we shine. Not literally as a light bulb. God didn't give you that. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. And think about that. If you're walking around shining as for a sign gift as Moses was given, with his face shining like that, uh, that would draw attention to you. God doesn't operate that way today. What the devil gave you is pure heresy. Okay? Now, Isaiah chapter 29, verses 1 on to verse 4. Absolutely. Isaiah chapter 29, verses 1 on to verse 4. Woe to Ariel, to Ariel, the city where David dwelt. Add ye year to year, let them kill sacrifices. Yet I will distress Ariel, and there shall be heaviness and sorrow, sorrow, and it shall be unto me as Ariel. I will camp against thee round about, and will lay siege against thee with a mount, and I will raise forts against thee. And thou shalt, am I reading the right thing? Am I reading? Yes. And thou shalt be brought down to the ground, and shall speak out of the ground, and thy speech shall be low out of the dust. Because they speak of things of the world, low out of the dust, coming from the earth, earthly, sensual, devilish. Okay? And thy voice shall be as one that hath a familiar spirit. 
those who peep, mutter, okay, peep, mutter, blah, 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 blah. And thy speech shall be as low, be low out of the dust from man. And thy voice shall be as of one that hath a familiar spirit out of the ground from whence man came. And Satan, save for us th the things that be not of God, but the things that be of man, of the earth. And thy speech shall whisper out of the dust. Oh, the tie-ins with Genesis chapter 3, which we already looked at. Incredible. So familiar spirit is familiar with the things of the world. Acquainted. Acquainted with the things of God. Like my be our best friend is acquainted with my sister, but not familiar with her, but acquainted. Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1, okay? Mark chapter 1, verses 16 under verse 27. Now as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Shimon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. And when he was gone a little farther thence, he saw James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, who also were in the ship mending their nets. And straightway he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants and went after him. And they went into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority, and not as the scribes. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh. He is the Father. Yes. And there was in, the, in their synagogue a man with an unclean. And what is clean? The fear of the Lord. Hmm. Uh, 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 yeah, with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, saying... Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Ah, art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art. The Holy One of God. So this unclean spirit knew, knew, was acquainted with the Lord. I know thee who thou art. The Holy One of God. A devil called Jesus the Holy One of God. The Charismatics call Jesus the Holy One of God. These Catholic coadjutors call Jesus the Holy One of God. They're devils. They're acquainted. But they're not familiar with the Lord. And familiar, personal, closeness. You know, as we looked in Job and in Psalms and in Jeremiah. Familiar, personal, okay? Let's continue. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of here, out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. And they were all amazed, insomuch that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commanded he even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. Yes. And go to Ma uh, Mark chapter 5 now. Mark chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 13. So a devil, an unclean spirit. I know thee who thou art, Jesus, the Holy One of God. That came from a devil. Devils can make that kind of praise? Yeah. What, 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 what's that? Uh, James 2.19? Thou believest there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe. And tremble. You believe in the scriptural Godhead. The devils also believe and tremble. You're not a devil, are you? Charismatic. I wonder. Mark chapter 5, verses 1 on verse 13. 
And they came over onto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him. No, not with chains. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. Hold your place here. Go to 1 Kings chapter 18. Hold your place. Come on. 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18. We want verses 26 and 29. We want verses 26 and 29. But look at that verse. Okay? Verse 5. In Matthew, uh, Mark chapter 5. And always, night and day, night and day, he was in the mountains, in the mountains, and in the tombs among the dead, crying and cutting himself with stones. Cutting himself. Crying, crying out amongst the dead. Why go to the dead for the living? Hmm? In the mountains. Night and day. First Kings chapter 18, verses 26 and 29. The prophets of Baal. And they took the bullock which was given them, and they dressed it, and called on the name of Baal from morning even until noon, saying, O Baal, hear us! But there was no, no voice nor any that answered. And they leaped upon the altar which was made. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them. You crazy charismatics. And said, Cry aloud, for he is God. Either he is talking, or is he, or he is pursuing, or he is in a journey, or peradventure he sleepeth, and must be awaked. Verse 28. And they cried aloud and cut themselves after the manner with knives and lancets till the blood gushed out upon them. And it came to pass when midday was past and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that there was neither voice, nor any to answer, nor any that regarded. Mark chapter 5, verse 5 again. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains, and in the tombs, a dead God, a God who couldn't answer, can't hear, hmm. crying and cutting himself with stones. You put those together, okay? I've seen this in my mother who is in hell, unfortunately, crying and she would get injuries. I talked about that before, but let's continue. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. This devil-possessed man went and worshipped Jesus. Devils can worship Jesus? Look at the Charismatics. Look at the Catholics. Yes. Yes. The Catholics are really, really astute. The Charismatics. And cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them out, or send them away out of the country. Now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding, and all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, 
and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were choked, and they were about 2,000, and were choked in the sea. So you see devils giving praise unto the Lord. See, devils are acquainted with the Lord, but they don't, you know, like I said, these heretics, they're acquainted with things of Scripture, but knowing the deep things of God through the Scriptures, they don't, they don't because they're not saved. And what deep kind of thing that they might come up with? Wow. It's from Satan. Go to Acts chapter 19. Thou believest there is one God, even the true God of the scriptures, the Godhead. But yet that God <laughs> appeared to you? No, he didn't. Acts chapter 19, verses 13, under verse 20. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preacheth. We adjure you by the uh, Jesus who Paul preaches. See, they were trying to associate them themselves with what Paul preached while not taking it to themselves personally because they didn't believe that. This, this was their living. Okay, like these crazy uh, charismatic deliverance devils out there. Give me a break. They're putting devils in, not taking them out. Okay? And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know. Who are ye? Now look at that. Those two, de those devils that we looked at. Jesus, thou son of the, the Holy One of God. And a devil worshipped the Lord. And right here, one with an evil spirit. Jesus I know and Paul I know. But who are you? Who are ye? Excuse me. See, these devils, they are, they are acquainted with things of Scripture but they don't know the Lord. They don't fear the Lord. Oh, they fear the Lord, yes. Thou believest there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble, yeah. But they don't fear him out of a relationship of love with him, of course not. See, devils are acquainted with the things of scripture. Like I told you in a previous video, Satan knows all about this book. Why do you think he's so adamant and attacking it. Why do you think Satan has produced so many Bibles in your language that you can read and understand? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leapt on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear fell on them all. The name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many that believed came and confessed and shewed their deeds. Many of them also which used curious arts. Oh, such as wizardry and stuff like that. Listen to familiar spirits. Brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Amen. 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 Here's the truth. Go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I, I realize that with a lot of you charismatics, I'm not. this is not a waste of time, but you're not going to hear this. You're not going to repent. You believe and you you saw something. I ain't denying that. But you believe that what you saw was truly God and he's talking to you and all this nonsense is happening to you and you're going to try to go to the scriptures to justify your wicked devil heresy. 
2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 9 on to verse 12. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. They're not from God. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should be a lie. That they should be a lie, excuse me, yeah, believe a lie. You know, when it comes to verse 11, how many people like to attribute the strong delusion? I believe the strong delusion. There's no the in front of strong delusion. A lot of people want to attribute strong delusion as meaning only one thing. Well, I believe the strong delusion that comes is <laughs> about the rapture. Good for you. Or I believe the strong delusion is this. Uh, it's strong delusion. More than one thing. That they should believe a lie that is associated with strong delusion. Whatever that lie is uh, associated with that strong delusion. Strong delusion is not just relegated to one thing. It's whole. It's broad. Strong delusion is broad, while narrow is the way that leadeth unto life. But be aware of that, because I, I know of several people who like to say, the strong delusion is simply this, or it's this. No, it says... And for this cause, because they receive not the love of the truth, God shall send them strong delusion. Whatever whatever flavor, God shall choose your delusions for you. Whatever it is, whether you're charismatic or Catholic or, or whatever, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. First John chapter three. First John chapter three. We're almost done. First John chapter three. Verses one on to verse ten. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Not because they can see a light shining from your skin. That's crazy. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Remember that. 1 John 3, verse 4. What is sin? Sin is transgression of the law. Okay? Well, in the Garden of Eden, there wasn't a law given. He said it's a command. Don't eat from the tree. They transgressed. They committed sin. Okay? He said, hey, go ahead, eat all that. See that? Don't eat that. What did they do? They go and eat that. Okay? Sin is transgression against the law. Okay? And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. Okay? Now, this manifested doesn't mean that he showed himself to you personally. You're crazy. No. Meaning, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh. Look look in your reference. Is there a thing for Timothy in there? Should be. Hey, let's continue, okay? Whosoever abideth in him, abide in him. Abiding in who? Christ. He, he dwells with us, within us 24, 7, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. But we are not always abiding in him, even though he is always with us. Do we? No. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteousness. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Verse 9. See, people will come to this and say about sinless perfection. No. 
Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. Born of God, you must be born again. And when you are born again, the Lord lives within you. This born of God is talking about the seal of the Holy Ghost. This is talking about the Holy Ghost that dwells within you. The Holy Ghost that dwells within you, whomsoever is born of God doth not commit sin. The Holy Ghost within you is not going to lead you into sin and is not going to lead you into something that is contrary to his word. This is talking about the Lord in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's what this is talking about, not that you don't sin anymore. No. Christ in you cannot commit sin. God can't sin. God never sinned. And God within you can't and won't sin. But see, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Your flesh can sin. You sin, yes you do. Yes, you. we sin every day. But see, God that is within us can't sin. And see, we are not God. We're God who was manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, never sinned, couldn't be tempted with evil. But the flesh sure could. So see, you guys don't confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh because God is flesh to you, not God manifest in the flesh. Very interesting. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. This is talking about the Holy Ghost in you. For his seed, for his seed remaineth in him. That seed is reference unto the Holy Ghost. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. Verse 9 is talking about the Holy Ghost. Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father within you, his seed. You know, that unction from the Holy One. Okay? In this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither hath he, neither he that loveth not his brother. This is not talking about sinless perfection. It's talking about the Lord dwelling within you. And the Lord that dwells within you will not lead you or guide you into sin and cannot sin. But remember, God is enforcing you. Neither is Satan. Okay? Finally, let's go to Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. We're almost done. Luke chapter 11. We want verses 14 on to verse 26. Luke chapter 11, verses 14 on to verse 26. And he was casting out the devil, and it was dumb, couldn't speak. And it came to pass, when the devil was gone out, the dumb spake, and the people wondered. But some of them said, He casteth out devils through Beelzebub, the chief of devils. And others tempting him, sought of him a sign from heaven. But he knoweth their thoughts, said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and a house divided against, its, against a house falleth. If Satan also be divided against himself, how shall his kingdom stand? Because ye say that I cast out devils through Beelzebub. Now, you read the testimony of Brother Alberto Rivera. Um, he gives testimony about how he went to a house to exercise a devil. And when he did the wafer thing, it ceased. Uh, that, I believe, is in the video of uh, Ghosts Amongst Us, which is going to be in the description box of this. Uh, but... But, Satan doesn't fight against Satan. See, all this false stuff is in cahoots with Satan, okay? The Charismatics, the Catholics, okay? Stuff like that. They all work together because they all serve Satan. So, Satan, in order to make it look, to put off the suspension of disbelief, he will bring certain things to pass, okay? Okay? Like I said, I believe that's in the Ghosts Amongst Us video where we go through what Alberto Rivera says uh, in his testimony and whatnot, okay? But you got to remember that. 
Satan doesn't fight against Satan, but he will do things to make it appear as though his Catholic priests are casting out devils, that these charismatics are, go out, go, 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 you know? Yeah, let's continue. And if I, by Beelzebub, cast out devils, <laughs> by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore shall they be your judges. Yeah. Yeah. But if I with the finger of God cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man armed keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he taketh him, taketh from him all his armor wherewith wherein he trusted and divided and divided. Excuse me. Let me read that over. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he taketh from him all his armor wherein he trusted and divideth his spoil. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me is scattered. When now, remember, this is Luke chapter 11, right? This is before the death, burial, and resurrection. When our Lord was on the earth, the Holy Ghost was not given yet. So people still at this time were not sealed until the day of redemption, okay? The New Testament begins with the death of the testator. You read about that in Hebrews chapter 9, okay? So this is doctrinally still under the law in the Old Testament. When our Lord Jesus Christ dies, buries, and raises again, third day according to the scripture, that brings in this dispensation which we are in today, the time of the Gentiles. But he said this under the law while offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jews. And at that time, still, when our Lord was on the earth, the Holy Ghost was not a permanent resident. He could come and go, come and go, come and go. So, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and finding none. He saith, I will return unto my house whence I came out. And when he cometh, he findeth it swept and garnished, cleaned up. Then goeth he and taketh to himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Now, people like to say that, well, you can lose yourself. You can't lose what is not, it's not yours to lose. This was said before the death, burial, and resurrection under the law. And he is making reference to the current act dispensation where God was not a permanent resident within the person. Okay, so, you know, he can come in and clean you up, but during this dispensation, okay, God was not a permanent resident. He could come and go, come and go, come and go. Okay, that's what that's talking about. But Peter, in 2 Peter chapter 2, makes a reference similar to this, okay? 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 20 under verse 22. For, at, for if after they escape the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Now, when Peter wrote this, this was in this dispensation where God is a permanent resident within the believer, unlike when our Lord said that in Luke chapter 11, where the Holy Ghost was not given unto men yet. Okay, you have to rightly divide the word of truth. But the instruction and in righteousness in verse 11 plays off of what we're reading here. Okay, instruction and in righteousness. You do know the difference between doctrine and instruction and in righteousness, don't you? Apparently some of you don't. Okay, but you are the church of the living God. You know the truth. You know what our Lord expects of you. And you started out strong, but then you went and dabbled in sin. It's going to be worse for you than at your beginning because you know better. When our Lord said that, the Holy Ghost wasn't given. It was still under the law where the, the Holy Ghost could come and go, come and go. Today, if you are saved, you're sealed. The Holy Ghost, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord is that spirit. God, our Father, dwells in you permanently. See, And you can quench the spirit. And you can quench the spirit so bad to where it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 5, uh, to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. 
For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. You know, also too, you're lost and you hear the truth and you continue on, you're a child of disobedience. You hear the truth and continue to walk in the world, oh, it's bad for you. But you as a church of the living God, the Lord's in you and you decide to go back to your... But... It has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog, male, is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow, woman, that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Hmm. So what do you do? What do you do? You've had a religious experience. You've had all this sensational stuff go on. You're being plagued by the crutch ghost. You know, I love you. And I hope this offends you to the point where you really consider whether or not you are truly saved, charismatic. Because it's, it's very deceptive. It's, it's pleasing to the flesh. You can say to people, well, I saw God. God speaks to me. I see things. He revealed, I saw a dream. I, it, it gratifies the flesh. What do you do to combat this? The only thing you can do. Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 on to verse 11. And there is only one, man, one name given among men under heaven by where we must be saved, Jesus Christ. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Things in heaven, things in earth, things under the earth. That is the answer. Calling upon the name of the Lord. If you're a charismatic and you're not saved, <laughs> you need to repent. Recently, this week, it has been shown you through Scripture that God is not making personal appearances to you. Uh, this month, April, it has been shown you that God is not dealing with you as he did with people within the Old Testament within another dispensation through dreams and visions. Okay? It has been shown you through Scripture that God within you is not going to give you something contrary to his word. Okay, it's not going to contradict. Okay, it has been shown you in scripture. Please repent before it is too late for you. That's going to be it for this video. Um, hopefully, this was not the video that I <laughs> had wanted to do, but this was something that the Lord had stirred, um, something to consider about this familiar spirit thing. And you think familiar spirits are not around today? Yes, they are. They're, they're devils. They're devils. Be careful, brethren. Be careful, you who might watch this. Please repent of your sins. Your sin of thinking that you have seen God. Repent of your self-righteousness. Yeah, repent of your sin. You haven't seen God. And you're saying that you've seen God. That's a lie. That's a sin. You haven't seen God. That's a lie. God hasn't spoken to you. That's a sin. That's a lie. God didn't give you something that is totally contrary to the truth. That's a sin. That's a lie. You need to repent of your self-righteousness. 
You're esoteric, that you're someone special because God is apparently a respecter of persons for you because he appeared to you where he doesn't appear unto other people or shows you things that people who are diligent in the scriptures daily don't receive, but you receive. So, that's going to be it for this video. Please keep us in your prayers. We need your prayers more than anything. Thank you for those of you who help us and um, pray for us. Please continue to do so. And uh, I'm going to get this uploaded. Got to take Xena out. And um, yeah. Hope this helps. We love you. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. And we'll see you in the next video, okay?